This is definitely Kate's floor. The hospitals always freak me out. I, I hear you. But imagine how Kate feels. I'm so glad I, I get to see her again. I hope it's not too weird for her. No, she'll be stoked to see you. Who wouldn't be? This be it. I'm a little nervous. Just go in there and be your friend. I'll wait out here so you can chill by yourselves. I was a total dick for blowing a fuse when you answered Kate's call the other day. Damn straight. Good thing you ignored me. I had no idea what shit she was going through. And you saved her. Like me. I'm sorry. It's cool. I understand. Thanks, Chloe. But don't be sorry. We're all on the same team. Team Max. Let Kate know we're gonna string Nathan up by his balls then. Nah. Oh yes, <laughs> I'm on it. Fuck, if I didn't rewind, or... Oh, what up girl? Oh my god, it's nice to see you up. I'm so happy right now. Sad about the birds though. The eggs? Fuck. Max! Oh, Kate. What up, beautiful? I thought I'd never see you again. I feel so ridiculous. I'm so sorry. Kate, listen to me. You have nothing to be sorry about. Other people do. Whoa. You do not know how happy I am to see you. You look awesome. Is it a stupid question if I ask how you're doing? Now that you're here, I'm doing even better. Now kiss. I'm so grateful to you for coming up to the roof to talk me down. Max, I felt so lost and alone. When I saw how much you cared, how hard you were trying. Now kiss. It made me realize I wasn't alone. Thank you. Kate, there are so many people who love you and want to help you. I know. You should see all the letters and postcards. I gave most of the flowers to other patients here because they need them more than me. Oh, you sweet angel. I'm keeping the balloons, though. One of the nurses gave me some pen and paper so I could do some drawings. Oh, they're happy looking again. I love your illustrations. They got kind of dark there for a while. But I have an idea for a new children's book about bullying. I was thinking of having some photographs in there, too. I hope that's a subtle hint that you'll let me take the photographs for the book. Was that subtle? You better take the pictures, Max. I'm going to be here for another day until my family comes out to visit. How are they treating you? Like they need to protect me forever. They're so upset, and I know they feel guilty even though they didn't do anything. I was surprised how many students from Blackwell wrote me. Daniel, Mr. Jefferson, even Victoria wrote me a very sweet note. And I believe she was being real. Me too. I'm glad you believe again, Kate. I'm working on it, Max. I just pray I can get this drawing right. Oh my god, she- oh my god, I'm so happy to see her so lively. Like, holy fuck, like, episode one, episode two, episode three. She just seems so dark. Something I've noticed so far, and it's plainly obvious by the thumbnails I've been using, this game has been very dark lately. Like, the colors in Life is Strange during episode three, and maybe episode two even, have been really dark, but I've noticed that's, like, the environments, the backgrounds, even like the, the textures, they all look so much brighter in this playthrough. Seriously. That's some kind of like subtle subliminal shit right there. Oh, I love Kate's happy rainbow flock. <laughs> so cute. And yeah, Victoria isn't that bad. She's just a bitch, but she's not terrible. Good to see that Kate is still working on her book report. The October Country? We can sit down, we can look and speak to her. That is so good to know that Kate is drawing again. Yeah. Those are nice flowers. And from Taylor? Wow, props to her. Why are you so surprised? Taylor's not bad either. If this gets Kate through the night, so be it. Like... Okay, so I play as Max, right? And like, I notice some things, but then, it, then I notice that Max doesn't notice a lot of things. 
It's just like a real disconnect. I don't think get well is quite apropos. That's why sometimes I'm just like, I just shake my head at the shit she says. That is so sweet. Even Victoria signed. But not Nathan. Hmm. That is kind of shitty, yeah. But there's many reasons why he wouldn't sign. Possibly guilt? Like, the boy puts on a front. I don't know if I would say he's not all bad, because I think Nathan is pretty terrible so far, but there is a lot more to his character. He's the one character I want to know more about, like, immediately. I want to know more about him, because as of right now, I don't know what to really think of him aside from the on-the-surface shit that the game's presented us with, you know? It could be simply he didn't sign because he wasn't around, because the kid has a lot of shit going on. Victoria Chase might be queen bitch, but she's not evil. Kate, I know you hate me and you should, but I only want to see you smile again. Please let me know if you need anything. Hugs and kiss, Vic. Vic. <laughs> not even Victoria. Vic. Hmm. Is that a dialogue option? Oh, yeah, it is. That is so sweet. I guess looking at. Even Victoria signed. I guess looking at the. Um, but not Nathan. I guess looking at the card gives us a dialogue option. Thank you, sisters. You really saved Kate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which one of them is Lynn? I know a popular idea about one of the binders being Kate's sister's binder, because one of her sisters is named Lynn. Which one would it be, though? I really hope not the youngest looking one, because that's just fucking weird. Anyway, let's have a chit chat. Kate, it is so good to hang out with you again. Max, I owe you so much. And I can tell you want to talk to me about something. Mm, let's talk about you first. I always want to talk to you. <laughs> we missed our tea session this week. That was so not cool. We need to plan like a tea shop tour of Portland. Oh yes, and you could bring Warren along too. Why? He's got nothing to do with this. Fuck that shit. No boys allowed. <laughs> you are funny, Max. And right. <laughs> Let's talk about Nathan. I want you to know I'm this close to getting all the info I need about Nathan. Nathan Prescott has to pay for what he did. And we have to stop him from hurting anybody else. I wish I could have gotten his ass kicked out of Blackwell. Me too. But his dad would never let that happen. I thought I had a tough family. So what is going on with him now? Hmm. Something tells me that the Vortex Club is kind of an afterthought in that kid's mind. I was gonna say Prescott family. Especially after talking to him in the diner. I think he's probably more preoccupied with the things happening in his life that's not Vortex related. I think his family is totally protecting him. Oh, God damn it. Or worse. I never say this about people, but Max, there's something evil about the Prescotts. They have something to do with death. Whoa. We're going to stop him. I just have to find Nathan's room number, get inside, and get the clues I need. Max, please let me help. I can get the number, and I'll text it to you, okay? Of course, Kate. I can't do this without you. Now it's time for Nathan to watch out for us. Oh my god, what just happened there? That... That connection with death comment is a little... It's a little... Like, a little weird and a little too meaningful for just a casual conversation about Nathan. <laughs> Holy crap, like that came out of like fucking left field. And the whole butterfly flying thing after Kate told us that she would help. I'm scared of getting her involved. Things could even go worse for her now. She has a binder about her. Maybe if I never mentioned Nathan, she wouldn't get involved. I don't know. Fuck. Whatever. I saw Victoria's letter. How does that make you feel? Max, I know Victoria can be a... Uh... A bitch. Not nice. But I do believe in forgiveness and redemption. I might be naive, but I feel her struggle. Me too. I 
could have taken a picture of her covered in paint, but I didn't, and we had a genuine moment. We all have our moments. Why do you think she acts so mean? It's an insecurity thing. She uses her bitchiness as a blanket and a safety net. Because when you pour your hearts out to people and get rejected, it hurts so much more than being rejected because you're a bitch. It's a mask. She's insecure. If you're comfortable with yourself, you don't need to act superior. Yeah. Victoria doesn't look like she has much to be insecure about. If anybody could make Victoria see the light, it would be Kate Marsh. No. I think it will take more than that, Max. I have to get back to our uh, mission. You don't know how much it means to see you again. I do. That's why I love you, Max. Thanks for taking care of my bunny. Tell Alice I'll see her soon. Hmm. Max says shit that just I disagree with, and then she says shit like that, and then I'm happy. Like this, oh man. God damn it, Max. And I don't know. I'm so used to seeing Kate kind of sad and depressed, and I'm used to seeing or inner. I'm used to Max's interactions with Kate being like kind of neutral or like up and down, positive and negative, always like yo-yoing from high to low to high to low again. But it's kind of fascinating seeing how open and happy she, like open and happy she is with Max now that we saved her life. That's something that happens in this game a lot. I do good things for people and they respond positively. I remain neutral and they think I'm a nosy bitch. You know? You know what I mean? It just puts things into perspective. It's amazing to just sit here quiet with Kate again. I don't think I'll ever know how much destiny I'm changing. But whoever said we only have a single fate? <sighs> Time travel is such a mindfuck. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Stop doing it. Yeah, dude, just stop, stop fucking do it. I don't know. I think the way that people interact with the Max is kind of accurate sometimes, because I think human beings are pretty guarded creatures. When people take the risk and take the plunge to try to connect with us, we respond positively. But if they're just there, the easier thing to do is just to keep yourself guarded, maybe? I don't know. What up, girl? Well, how is she? She's cool. She's still Kate Marsh. Thank God. I'm glad we came to see her. Thanks for coming with me. Now let's go pay a visit to Nathan Prescott. That little prick is not going to be glad when he sees us. Oh, what in the shit? Jefferson's wearing a blue shirt. Principal Wells wears the same clothes every single episode. Okay, something that I've noticed for sure is that changes in outfits don't happen how you expect them to. Wells has been wearing the same clothes for the past three days. Jefferson was wearing the same shirt for the past two days. So why is it now that episode four, he's got a blue shirt on? Hey, Max. How you doing? Oh, hi, Mr. Jefferson. I'm okay. Um, and this is my friend, Chloe. Yeah. What's up? Chloe? Why isn't somebody as cool as you going to Blackwell? I was way too cool for the school. It's a long story. In actual files here. I can imagine. Max, are you sure that you're all right? It's weird just being on campus like everything's normal. I know. Lame as it sounds, life has to go on. I think there's too much going on in my life. On that note, Blackwell duty calls. Remember, 
I'm going to announce the winner of the Everyday Heroes contest tonight at the party, so I hope you'll be there to celebrate, even though I'm sorry you didn't enter a photo. I understand your reasons. You can't force an artist to work. So, you don't hate me for what I said to the principal? Yeah, I want to know. I'm proud of you for caring so much about a troubled friend. And I take hope in the fact that you have plenty of time to find your way. Motherfucker, answer Just the question. Get in the habit of putting your work out there. Thanks, Mr. Jefferson. You're buying that shit? I'll definitely be there tonight. Me too. I'll be Max's date. You better dance with us at least once. Oh, God. And nobody should have to see me dance. Plus, you don't want to watch the old hipster trying to keep up with the kids. I have some pride. Be seeing you. Yes, you will. Oh, my God. No clue. <laughs> Hot floor teacher. Gross. Son of a You are out of control. Bitch. Not yet. Just wait until the rager tonight. <sighs> Shut Mother. up. Don't be jealous because Mark Jefferson thinks I'm cool. I am so ignoring you. <laughs> Fine. Since I'm here, I'll see if I can get some dirt from Justin. I haven't talked to him in a while. Now that is a great plan. Son of a bitch, dude. Mark Jefferson, you smooth ass motherfucker. Let's see if I can find out where Nathan is. Like, the moment he started, like, the moment he said, like, What's a cool girl like what's a cool looking girl like you not doing here at Blackwell? I'm like, oh my god, you smooth son of a bitch. Yo, Chloe is naturally blonde. She's got blue eyes, dude. Just just the type. Just the type, you know? And I cannot fucking believe Max bought that shit. Like it's oh God. He didn't even answer the question. He just smoothly ignored it and just said what he wanted to say. I remember him talking shit about me right in front of Victoria last night. That bastard fucking son of a bitch. Principal Wells was so loaded the other night here. Okay. Alright, so I was actually gonna do a theory video about this building that Principal Wells was trying to get into, but I guess I'm glad I didn't because it might have been debunked because of the trailer. Prescott Dormitory, donated by Sean Prescott and the Prescott Foundation. So, during during episode 2 when we were talking to Kate, right? She said that what she remembered was being at the Vortex Club party and then being taken somewhere by somebody. It was kind of a long drive and she saw bright white lights. And after that she blacked out and then when she woke up she was outside the girls dormitory. I thought for a second why was Principal Wells trying so desperately hard to get into this building that he has the keys for. I thought that under the assumption that the three of them Nathan, Jefferson, and Wells were involved with the red binder so I thought maybe this building right here is where the um whatchamacallit the um the dark room is because let's say they took pictures of her while she was under the influence and then when they were done doing the creepy shit that they were doing they somebody like just carried her over to the girls dorm and just left her there could it be could it be that's where the like the sh the crime was happening but then you see that um the dark room is like beyond the safe in the preview and the safe, the stairway down to the safe, was shown right after the barn. I don't necessarily believe it's under the barn yet. It could just be a misleading, uh, misleading editing. It wouldn't be hard for them to do that. What up, dude? I don't recognize you. Who are you? I don't remember. I see Zach's wearing the same clothes, but Brooke isn't. Like, why do some people have changes of clothes? What up, dickwad? Enjoy the big game, Zachary. I hope it's not the last. I hope you shatter a kneecap. Cause you're a prick. Bring it on home, bro. What up, girl? That's so ironic that Warren asked Max to the drive-in. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Yo, dude. I'm not really even that interested. <laughs> She's so salty. I feel. S it's not like I don't own all the original Apes films. <laughs> She's so salty. Oh my god, I feel so bad. I mean, like, he, he, Warren can't help who he likes. Maybe I should have asked Warren to go. Yes, you should have. If you like a guy, just ask him out. It's the fucking 21st century. Brooke doesn't look happy that I'm going ape with Warren. 
I'm not gonna back out just because she's jealous because I said I would go but I do think he's terrible for not actually not take that back maybe he's just stupid some guys just have no idea and are completely clueless either that or he's a dick and he's just playing this girl hey Brooke how are you I'm here as usual by the way thanks for helping Kate down are you okay I noticed that your hair color changed. Oh, there's blue streaks and red streaks in her hair. And in previous episodes, the red streaks were purple. You like to change it up. That's cool. Uh, let's talk about your drone. I might feel better taking your drone for a quick flight. Miss Grant finally gave up and let me fly her again. But you're going to the drive-in with Warren, so you don't have time to fly my drone. <laughs> really? So salty. I can't fly your drone because I'm going to see ape movies with Warren. You are perceptive, Max. Now, excuse me. My drone needs me. That's so ironic that Warren asked Max to the drive-in. Let's see if I can find out where Nathan is. I don't like that she's saying those things out loud right in front of Max. I mean, granted, of course they could just be mumbling to themselves, but you know, I'm playing- It's not like I don't own all the original Apes films. I feel like, right now, I feel like she's taking jabs at me. <laughs> but I really like this girl. Talk to you later, Max. Oops. That's so ironic that- Yeah, okay, so I press RB and now it's cycling back all the fucking way through. Oh my goodness, is this a bug or is it my controller? I don't know. Well, it looks like we're gonna be rewinding the slow way, everybody. I'm sorry. I'll edit it though, so you don't have to sit through it. I really like this girl. She's 100% straight up honest about how she feels. I really like people like that. Hey, Brooke. How are you? I'm here as usual. By the way, thanks for helping Kate down. Are you okay? You can always know where you stand with people that are just straight up with you. I, I can't get my limited brain around that eclipse and the beached whales. I was hoping the science department had some ideas. Warren and I are supposed to compare notes and theories this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Two big brains are better than one. Or mine. We'd get the Nobel Prize if we could explain this phenomenon, but even Miss Grant has no clue. She might have a slight superiority complex, Brooke, because she does like letting Max know how much smarter she is and how much more fitting she would be for Warren because of how smart they both are and how sciencey they both are. You can see it in her smirk. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. This is fucking this is so adorable. But yo, I'm not gonna act like some jealous girl. I obvi I'm I fucking know that Brooke likes Warren. I don't care. I'm just going to see a movie with a friend. Whatever. It's all good. Don't worry about it, Brooke. I need to find Nathan. Have you seen him around? Ask Warren. I mean, you're going to the movies with him and everything. Oh my god. Okay, Brooke, um, but right now I'm trying to find Nathan. Warren's not good enough for you? Okay. I saw Nathan pissed and walking off campus earlier. Good luck getting that date, Max. Thanks. <laughs> I have to go. Talk later, Brooke. Good. Nathan is not around. I should go back to Chloe. Yeah. I mean, I can tell him if you want. I can tell Warren that you like him and let you deal with it. It's not like I don't own all the original Apes films. Like, seriously. <laughs> it's just. Oh, I had to clear away another batch of dead birds today. Sad. It makes me mad. Maybe I should have asked Climate Warren. Climate change though. isn't real, my ass. <laughs> I think everything is changing here. As a scientist, I'm fascinated. As Michelle Grant, I'm very worried. Arcadia Bay is scared too. Look at the weather. And the animals. Not to mention poor Kate Marsh. We all need to look out for each other these days. Holy fuck. Two minor characters that I fucking love are having a really awesome conversation. I never expected these two to be like conversational buddies. That's so cool. 
Oh man, so many chances to speak with people. Let me check out the totem. Yeah, shut up. You should have. Oh. Okay, where did these rocks come from? This is too Blair Witch for me. A cairn. One photo for posterity. Cool, cool. Please let this be the the most recent one. I think it was. I think it Yes. Okay, two tails. Probably squirrels. Let's keep an eye out. I can actually do this. I have hopes. I don't think the Tobango will ever give up any secrets to us. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. Well anyway, douchebag Zach. I don't want to go back to Chloe yet. So we're gonna talk to Oh, before we talk to Sam and Miss Grant. That's so ironic that Warren asked Max. Nope. One squirrel? Hey, buddy. Did you think you could hide from Max Caulfield, squirrel paparazzi? Oh, that's a obvious, obvious clue if I've ever heard of one. Did you think you could hide from Max Caulfield, squirrel paparazzi? I had to clear away another batch of new birds. Okay, that, that squirrel is not giving me the prompt for a picture, I don't think. That's so ironic that Warren asked Max to the driver. Could it be something to do with this squirrel? Hey, squirrel. How would you like a partner for a quick photo op? Yes! I might be able to do it. It's not like I don't own all the Wait, what is this? Photos. Make art, not war. Yo, yo. Go over there. I had to clear away another. Did you think you could hide from Max Caulfield, squirrel paparazzi? Can I find a scrap of food? Can I scraps of food? Scraps of food. Something to do with this leaf pile? Look at the weather and the animals. Not to mention. So long since I've seen you. Because you're way too cool for us now, Chloe. Way too much shit going on, man. Try going to Blackwell. Insane. So I hear. Any word at all on Rachel? Dude, I wish. I'm working on it. And I miss her laugh when I bail off my board. She was probably high. Yeah, she had the sick nugs. True that. Okay, I have to bounce. Come hang with us at the park sometime. Oh, that is so chill. I like both. I like the friendship that those two have. Oh, well, whatever. I have not seen anything that could I could use to to coerce these two squirrels to come together. So, Hello, his squirrels. Thanks again for helping me fight the power. No problem. That's cool to see that Samuel's not alone for once. Yeah, it actually really is. That's cool to see that Samuel's not alone for once. But you know what? I kind of feel bad now because I did assume that he was a loner. Just because of the way he talked and the way he acts. Maybe the dude was just working, doing his job. How are you doing, Max? Been a tough week. I know. Yes, it has, Samuel. How are you? Sad and confused like everybody else in Arcadia Bay. You look like you have a lot of questions, too. Oh, Sammy. I fucking love you, dude. Let's talk about people. More questions than answers. Samuel is always here to talk. I, f I fucking love you, dude. I actually just talked to Kate Marsh in the hospital. She's doing so much better. Because of you, Max. That was quite a rescue. Mm. 
I feel like with Sam, I can be much more real and maybe hint at some kind of supernaturalness to Max and he would understand. So let's go with Destiny. It could have gone either way. Samuel, do you think that we each have a destiny? Oh, perfect. Yes, I, I do, Max. In many different lifetimes, of course. Kate Marsh believed in something different, so that's her destiny. I believe you. Kate just needed some more helpful spirits like her friend Max. I hope she finds them now. Oh, God. I fucking love this guy. Have you seen Nathan Prescott around? I try not to. Oh, you don't like Nathan, do you, Sammy? Whoa, you really don't like Nathan. How come? And Samuel likes everybody until they give him a reason not to. He did. Well, okay, enough said. You know a lot of Blackwell secrets, so I thought you could help me. Max, I I'm a custodian, not a psychic. I can only help by warning you to be careful. Hmm. Hmm, I'm gonna go back. And... I'm sorry. I, I better get going now. Rewind. I want to know about the other option. Sorry to bother you again, Samuel. There's no bother here, Max. What a nice guy. More questions. Samuel. Oh, shit. Alright, Sam, I know that you don't like Nathan, and that's because Nathan gave you a reason not to like him. So what did he do? So, what do you know about Nathan? I know enough to not want to know anymore. Well, okay, <laughs> enough said. You know a lot of Blackwell secrets, so I, I thought you could help me. Max, I I'm a custodian, not a psychic. I can only help by warning you to be careful. I don't know how to take that response, the slight stutter in his voice when he said he's just a custodian. Do you ever talk with David Madsen? He talks to me. I listen. That's how David operates. <laughs> yeah. He sees things, not people. But I, I think he sees you, Max. Yeah, I really think so too. Like, of all the other characters, in Life is Strange, David Madsen sees a handful of people. He sees Joyce, he sees Max, he sees Chloe, and I think he sees Rachel because Chloe loves Rachel so much. And other people he just doesn't give two shits about. Just think about it this way. He's very, very professional. Like he didn't talk shit about David, or David didn't talk shit about Mark Jefferson until he was outside of school hours. That's what he specifically said in that garage. It's just business to him. Why do you say that? Because you both see with cameras. I think you have better vision than both of us. No, Max. I, I just look at everything from a different angle. Oh, I fucking love this guy. That, um... That comment about him... Or that comment about David and Max seeing things from a camera, it's very true. It's very true. They observe. Max is a character that likes observing people and their behavior from a distance. That's what we are do that's what we're doing here. At least that's what I'm doing as a player. I'm observing a lot of characters' behaviors from a distance from my from my chair right now. I'm even observing Max's behavior from this chair I'm sitting behind this monitor. I think that might be what Sam's hinting at. David's kind of the same way. He watches people. That's why he has a knack for surveillance and as such as his head of security. Like in episode 2 right before Kate's on the roof, you see him in the corner. You always see him at school in like corners and shit, just like peering out. Why a corner? You get the best field of view from a corner. 